Hi, and welcome to IUCN's World Conservation Congress. I'm Pierre Cousteau, founder of Cousteau Divers and a goodwill ambassador of the IUCN. And unfortunately, I can't be with you this year, uh, which is why I'm making this short video, which I hope makes up for my absence, at least in part. I was recently diving in Southeast Asia, in Indonesia, and I'd like to share with you a couple of images I took there, a place my father visited over 20 years ago. I was diving on board the seahorse Liveaboard, and over the period of 10 days, we accomplished 40 dives, three by day and one by night every day. On these images, you can see some of the amazing creatures that I encountered during these dives. It was really a fantastic experience to immerse myself in such beauty and such diversity. It was mind-boggling to see so many creatures. My father, Jacques-Yves Cousteau, visited Indonesia 20 years ago. Here is a short extract of one of his movies. Sleek silvery moon shadows glide into the web spun deep in the sea by the artist. The paintbrush of light first reveals the eyes of the sea. Those of a trumpet fish startled by the lamps. The porcupine fish rendered in black and white scrutinizes the newcomers. The speckled groupers all a disapproving eye. The light graphics of the sea lilies and cleaner shrimp is raised by the massive neck and sharp gaze of the moray eel. Captivated by such an original welcome, the divers explore farther into this strange world. The pout fish, hidden in the cocoon he secretes at night, is deep in slumber. Serrano discovers with wonder the ribbon dance of the polycate worm. Trapped between fiction and fact, carried away by the performance, the diver is swept into another universe where the thread fin jack sails onto the stage. Today, as you are all aware, our environment is threatened and the capacity of this planet to sustain human life and human dignity is at stake. The depletion of natural resources, the pollution of the air, the soil, and our seas, our rivers, as well as the ocean acidification and the global warming that are a consequence of our irrational use of fossil fuels, are putting at risk the livelihoods of millions of people worldwide. Jacques-Yves Cousteau warned us about these problems dozens of years ago as you can see in this short clip. The Earth's population doubles every 35 years. Our cities are smothered in pollution. Mechanical aggressions ravage landscapes and devastate the ocean bottom. Oil spills become routine occurrences, annihilating ecosystems that children of tomorrow will still have to clean. It is time to defend the rights of those who will replace us on this planet. Look at the youth of the world. We have a single gift for them, enthusiasm for a life of dignity. We have a duty to respect the diversity and variety of ethnic origins, languages and customs. 
The great communication networks must be employed to amplify the symphony of the world, not the monotonous hum, which will signify its decadence. We must give every human child access to education, art, poetry, and philosophy. No, the manufacture of atomic bombs does not bring us closer to this goal. Luckily, the level of public opinion has helped me move mountains. 1,500,000 French people signed my petition for the protection of Antarctica, fulfilling my dream to preserve the planet's last virgin continent. To celebrate this victory, I brought six children to the white continent to take symbolic possession of their property. You are taking over the Antarctic for future generations, for your children and grandchildren. My father was convinced that the major underlying problem to all the environmental and social problems that we're seeing more and more today is overpopulation of our planet. So what is the solution? How can we fix all of these problems? Is there a solution? The first of the two solutions proposed by my father is to adopt a text, a law, called the Rights for Future Generations. I understood that water and life were indissolubly bound and that I must spend my own career fighting to protect that life and to safeguard future generations. Tomorrow, I will demand that the rights of generations to come be written in the duties of the living ones. The second solution envisioned by my father goes as follows. It would take $400 billion each year for at least 15 years to rid the world of misery, provide drinking water, education, and retirement support to everyone, which would automatically halt the human population boom. That's about one-third of global military budgets. I hope this World Conservation Congress is a success, that it'll be fruitful and productive, and that you will find new solutions, new, bold, daring, imaginative solutions um, for environmental problems of today and tomorrow. We need new solutions. We need creativity to find new solutions. We need daring solutions. We need impossible missions, and we need them to succeed.